What's up friends, Chuck here and welcome to the Bit Heroes Ultimate and Comprehensive Familiar Guide. In this video we'll be discussing all things familiars and we'll go over each aspect of familiars from the ground up. So by the end of the video you'll have a solid understanding of how familiars work and what to aim for. This guide will be broken up into 8 parts. 1. What are familiars and why do you need them? 2. What familiars can be captured? 3. Where to capture said familiars? 4. Where to find familiar schematics? 5. How to fuse familiars? 6. How and why to stable familiars? 7. How and why to attach augments to familiars? And finally 8. Which familiars to aim for? So let's get started with the first step. What exactly are familiars and why do you need them? Simply put, familiars are the enemies within Bit Heroes. If you come down here and click on this familiars button, you'll see every single familiar within the game. At the time of recording this video on the 10th of October 2019, there are 415 familiars within the game. They're broken up into five different categories. There's commons, rares, epics, legendaries, and mythics. If the familiar is lit up like this, it means you've either caught or fused that familiar. If they're grayed out and dull like this, that means you haven't. So that's what familiars are, they're just the enemies within the game. Why you need them is to progress through the game. So in the first zone here, you have flags and dungeons to progress to the second zone. Once you get to the second zone, you have flags and dungeons to get to the third zone, etc, etc. Why you need familiars, for the main reason you need familiars, is to progress through the game and through the flags. For flags, you can only use familiars and your character. For dungeons, you can use your character and people from your friends list and your guild. You can also use familiars, but it's much stronger to use people from your friends list and your guild. So to get through these flags, you'll need familiars and your character. You can, you can capture familiars and then you can fuse them, which we'll go into later into the video. Uh, but that is basically the use for them to help you progress through the game so that you can get to the next zone and then the next zone, etc., all the way to, through to the end of the game. So which familiars can be captured? Basically any familiar within the flags, the dungeons, and raids can be captured. Whether they're a common, a rare, an epic, or a legendary, you can catch them all within flags, dungeons, and raids. There are also familiars within trials, and gauntlet, and invasion, and expedition, and world boss, there's familiars all over the place. Every enemy you encounter in this game, apart from in PvP and GVG, is a familiar. But the only ones that can be captured are within the flags, the dungeons, and the raids. So we just spoke about what familiars can be captured. Let's take a look at where the familiars you need can be captured. Again, if we go to the familiar tab right down here, and we click on the familiars here, you can take a look at any of these and see what they do, and what their skills are and what augments they have, but it doesn't actually tell you where to find them. That's where the wiki comes in handy. If we take a look at the wiki right here, you can go to bitheroesfandom.com slash wiki slash familiars, and it will show you a list of every single familiar in the game and where to find them. So if we go back to Bit Heroes for a second and we take a look at the familiars, we can see here that this guy is called Boo Boo. It doesn't tell you where to find him. If you go to the, the wiki, you go to this website, find out boo boo here and it says z1 d1 or z9 d1 what these mean this means zone one dungeon one so if we go back to bit heroes for a second and we go to quests and we go to zone one which we're in already it means in zone one dungeon one so in here you can find that boo boo any flags any three flags before a dungeon also will have the same familiars in it so any familiar in here, here, and here will appear in this dungeon. So technically, Boo Boo can be found in any in some of these flags. I can't remember which one because it's been so long since I've done it. But you will find him in this dungeon. So if we take a look at another random familiar down here, we can look at the Goose. The Goose is in Zone 7, Dungeon 2. So if we go in here, we go to Zone 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. He will be in Zone 7, Dungeon 2. So this is Dungeon 1, this is Dungeon 2. So that's where you'll find him. 
if we go and take another look at some other familiar, so maybe Crumb here, we can see that he's in raid 6. So if we need to get a Crumb, we can go to raid, and we can go to raid 6. This is raid 1, you can see by the circles down here. Raid 1, raid 2, raid 3, raid 4, raid 5, raid 6. And this is where you'll find Crumb. So that's the best way to find out what familiars you need and where to find them. Just go to the wiki and look for the familiar that you need and it will say which zone or which raid it is in. Again, if you see these, these letters and numbers, this means zone six, dungeon three. It can also be in zone nine, dungeon two. So find the familiars you need, check the wiki, and then you can see exactly where you need to go. Next, we'll take a look at schematics. What are they and where to get them? So again, if you come down and click on this familiars button and go to fusion, You'll see every single schematic in the game. The ones at the top here that are lit up are the ones that you have. The ones down here that are greyed out are the ones you don't have. So what are schematics? Simply put, schematics are a bunch of materials and, and familiars fused together to make a stronger familiar. We'll go into how to fuse familiars in the next part, but for now, we're looking for schematics. So how do we find a, a schematic that we need? Well, to start with, we head over to the wiki. We can see here that we're in the familiars page as we were before. Here was the familiars we were looking at earlier. We click, go up here and we click on fusions and here we see all of the schematics. So we were looking at, we were looking at Boo Boo before. If we go up here and we see familiars, here's Boo Boo. Boo Boo has a fusion, a schematic, into Booty here and it tells you exactly what you need. So if we want to make this schematic of booty, we need a boo-boo and we need a batty. So if we want to look where boo-boo is, we can just open that page. If we want to look at what a batty is and where to find him, we can go to that page. Just open them both up and we can see right here that a boo-boo is in zone one, dungeon one, and a batty is in zone one, dungeon one. So to go put them together into the schematic to fuse booty, you need both of those familiars. A schematic can be found in any dungeon or flag or raid or anything that any of the familiars that go towards making and fusing that familiar are found. So in this aspect, in this particular um, example, Boo Boo and Batty are both found in Zone 1, Dungeon 1. So Boo Boo here, Zone 1, Dungeon 1, Batty, Zone 1, Dungeon 1. That means the schematic for that particular fusion, Booty here, can only be found in Zone 1, Dungeon 1. If we take another example, let's say we want to find the schematic and we want to fuse uh, Shramps. This is a very important fusion and we're going to talk about him and Borlan in a later part of the video. We can see that Shramps here needs a Gramps and a Shrump or Borlan needs a Merlan and a Bob. So again, all you need to do is you need to open these two, these, uh, these two pages click on uh, open the link for these two pages I should say so Gramps and Shrump so if we open them up we can go here and see where they are so it goes straight to Gramps here and it shows you that that is in zone 2 dungeon 2 we need Shrump which is in zone 1 dungeon 2 sorry for those pop-ups I don't have ad block activated at the moment so if we go back again take another look Gramps is in zone 2 dungeon 2 Shrump is in Zone 1, Dungeon 2. So if we go back into Bit Heroes for a sec, if we're looking for Shrump, he is in Zone 1, Dungeon 2, which means that he's in, this is Dungeon 1, this is Dungeon 2. So Shrump can be found in here, and Shramps, uh, Gramps, sorry, was in Zone 2, Dungeon 2, which is this dungeon right here. The schematic for Shramps can be found in either of those two dungeons, because either of those two, uh, both of those two familiars go towards the schematic to fuse shramps. So if you're in zone one, dungeon two, or if you're in zone two, dungeon two, both of those dungeons will have the access to find the schematic for shramps. If we go back here and we look at Borland, this is a very another very important schematic for early game. We can see that he has Merlin and Bob. If we open those pages, we can see where we find them. That didn't work very well. We can see Merlan is in, got to go down to the rares because he is a rare. Merlan is in zone one, dungeon three. 
and Bob is in Zone 1, Dungeon 2. So Zone 1, Dungeon 3, and Zone 1, Dungeon 2. So if we go back into Bit Heroes, we can see Zone 1, Dungeon 3 is this one. This is where you can find Merlan, and Zone 1, Dungeon 2 is where you can find Bob. Fuse those both together, and you will make yourself a ball land. The Zone 1 Dungeon 2 and the Zone 1 Dungeon 3 both have the familiars that you need, so the schematic for that ball land fusion can be found in both of those zones. That is how schematics work. It's kind of confusing once at the very start, but once you understand it, it's very easy. So if we're going to make a more complex schematic, so let's say we wanted to make a, um, let's say a duo bombs no sorry that's that's an actual uh familiar say we wanted to make a i don't know let's find something random say we wanted to make a a starly you will need an astroth and a bully so again you just open those open those pages and you can see where to find those familiars so astroth and bully we can see here that astroth is found in raid one bully is found in raid 3. Now I don't recommend fusing any of these legendary familiars, at least in the early game, but you can still see that Astaroth can be found in, zone, in raid 1, Bully can be found in raid 3. So in raid 1 and raid 3, you can find the schematic for Astali. It's the only places you can find them, you can't find the schematic for, Bull, uh, for Astali in, you know, zone 1, dungeon 2. It's only where these familiars appear. So again, raid 3 for Bully, raid 1 for Astaroth, in either raid 1 or raid 3 you can find the schematic for astali that's how schematics work so now you've found the schematic you want how do you use that schematic and fuse those familiars into a stronger familiar well we were in that screen before again if you go down to this familiars tab down here familiars button and go to the fusion tab these are all the schematics you've found so how do you fuse a schematic well let's go into it let's find a random schematic that we've already fused. Uh, here we go. Pengs. He'll do. So to make a Pengs, you'll need one Pengi, one Grims, five Epic Material, and 10,000 Gold. So if you need to know where to get the Pengs schematic from, again, just like the few last few segments, you just need to go to the wiki and look up the Pengs fusion. It will tell you what familiars you need, which is Pengi and Grims. You can open those pages up and see what dungeons they're in or what raids they're in, or whatever they are. This happens to be Zone 2, Dungeon 2. This is Zone 1, Dungeon 1. I just know that just from playing, and, and just osmosis from playing, and, and just just from playing. I know I know that where they are. Uh, so you'll need to find both of those familiars, 5 epic material, and 10,000 gold, and then you can fuse them together into pengs. I can't, cur I can't currently fuse pengs, because I don't have this one Grims here. So if you take a look at another familiar, and another fusion, probably one that I can make so I, sh I can showcase it off. We can see that I can fuse, um, here we go. I can fuse Mummite. I've never fused Mummite before, so this is a good opportunity to do so. So if you want to find the Mummite schematic, again, just go to the wiki, you look at fusions, you look up Mummite, and it will tell you what you need. It needs one Brute and one Mummy. <laughs> and it needs also needs 50 rare materials and 5k gold. You get all of these things together, and then you click the fuse button and that will turn all of these things into mummite so we can see here if we click on brute these are his skills and these are his stats if we click on mummy these are his skills and these are his stats if you click on the fusion itself on the schematic itself it will show you what it turns into and we can see here that he's much stronger and he has he now has this nine percent deflect chance as well so not only are you getting a stronger familiar you're also getting a bonus to said familiar and different skills so once you find out the schematic you want you find out where these things are located from the wiki you click fuse and you'll lose these two things as well you'll lose one of your brutes and you'll lose one of your mimi mummy but you will make this mummite so we click fuse we click yes you'll get this animation of them going in to the portal i guess and then coming down into that fusion. And there it is. We now have Mummite. 
Look at him. He's awesome. He's not actually that good, but he looks awesome. So that's how to find a uh, how, that's how to use a schematic and fuse a schematic into a stronger familiar. Let's do another one. Let's just go down to something down here. Uh, what else? Let's make something I've already made before. A na Naukmo. Every every familiar in this game has a really weird name. So this is Naukmo. So to make him, we need one Balmo and one Nok. We need 200 common material and we need 2000 gold. Once you find all of these, you click fuse and you turn these guys into him. So if we take a look at these guys individually again, we can see that this guy has these stats and these skills. He just has a basic attack and a 2 SP um, deal damage to everybody. And Nock here has these stats and these skills. He has an auto attack and a 1 SP deal um, this amount of damage to target enemy. So together, individually, sorry, they're not that great. Together, they fuse into this guy. We click fuse, we click yes. And we get the fusion again. You can turn off this um, animation if you want. If you don't want to sit through this every single time you fuse something, you can turn that animation off in the settings. Uh, but I just left it on to showcase. And so those two like kind of crappy familiars have been now turned into this guy, who is also a crappy familiar, but he's better than the other two. And we can see now his stats and his skills. They're different, but he also has this bonus here, 7.5% evade chance. So the basic gist of schematics and why to do them is they turn regular familiars into stronger familiars. And that is how you fuse familiars together. So now we've fused a familiar, let's talk about stabling that familiar and why that's important. If we click on the familiar button yet again, and we go to the stable button here, this is the stable and this is how you stable your familiars and you need to click on the board button. So if we click on the board button, we can go down to a familiar we want to do. Let's talk about Batty. And this is how you board and stable that familiar. So first off, you will need multiple different copies of the same familiar. So you can see here, I have seven Batties. If I stable one Batty, he will get 54 more power, 36 more stamina, and 45 more speed. You can see that on the right there. That Those numbers will be a lot higher for me because I it scales off my power. So for you, if you're just starting the game, for instance, and you're trying to board a familiar, you won't have that much of an increase in your, your stable, but you will still have an increase. So every single time you board and stable one familiar, you will get an increase to it. So if we do this, we can see that our, our Batty will get those extra stats. So let's do it. Are you sure you want to put Batty into your stable? Yes. So now if we go into here, sometimes it doesn't work straight away. You need to come out of here and go back into stable. And you can see now that we have our Batty there. He has this little blue icon here. That means he's plus one. So we have the Batty plus one out of five. This is him. If you want to release him, you can click here are you sure you want to release your baddie from the stable? Let's not do that. Let's go back out and go to uh, go to stable, sorry. Go to board, go all the way back down to the baddie that we had before and we can stable him again. If we stable him again, he gets another 54 power, another 36 stamina and another 45 speed. So let's do that again. Are you sure you want to put baddie into your stable? Yes. Now we can see that our baddie is now two out of five. So we now have a two out of five stabled baddie. Again, if we go to board, we can do another one. He's now three out of five here. Another one, four out of five here. And another one, five out of five here. So now we have a five out of five, a fully plus five stabled baddie. You can see your stats there on the right, 1,883 power, 1,255 stamina, and 1,569 speed. If we go back in to here, we can unstable him, right? So if we just look at his power, for instance, let's just take one stat to look at. He has 1,883. Remember that number, 1,883 power, fully stabled. If we release him back to zero, back to just a normal baddie, we can go take a look at him. 
he, he did have 1,883 power. Sorry, wrong thing. Board. He now has 1,668. So you can see by stabling a familiar, you make them much stronger. Now there's another aspect to this, which is augments, which we're about to go over in a second. But the idea is the more familiars you have of the, the exact same familiar, you can board them up, you can stable them, and it will make that familiar a lot stronger. So if you can find a good familiar that will help you, and you can make multiple of them and stable them all together, that familiar will become a lot stronger than it will if you just had the one familiar. Now it's time to talk about augments. Augments will give your familiars extra stats and abilities. We just talked about stabling familiars, making them stronger and giving them extra stats. That goes hand in hand with augments. Now you will get augments just playing the game naturally from raids and dungeons and trials, gauntlet, all that good stuff. They are occasionally on, on, um, on sale in the shop as well. Whether you want to buy them or not, it's up to you. But you will get some augments just by playing the game. Now how they work is this. If you go to the familiars button, yet again, and you pick a familiar, let's just go with Brom, just for why not. You will see here that he's got his augments screen and his skill screen. On the augment screen, there are the six augments you can put into him. Uh, there are four different types of augments across the six different boxes. So the top left ones are these ones. They're called um, the skeletal linings, effectively. The top middle one is a neuron stimulator. The top right is a microprocessing stabilized chip. And then the bottom three are all the pumps, the radial flow regulator pumps. So a pump in bottom left, a pump in bottom middle, and a pump in bottom right. So how augments work is this. You choose a slot. For this, we're just going to do this one as an example. It doesn't really matter. And you put in an augment. So for right here, we can see your opponent's first attack on you has a 3.4% increased chance to be evaded. If we click on that, all of a sudden, Brom now has that ability. Brom now has uh, the opponent's first attack on him, has a 3.4% chance to be evaded. That's it. That's how this augment works for Brom. Now, you can see this little brown uh, gray square here. That means that this augment is has one stack. This is as good as it's going to get. Now, I'll explain what I mean by that in just a second, but that's because he's a common. The higher tiered uh, familiar you put an augment on, the more stacks you will have which means that the more stats that this augment will end up ha uh, having if it's stabled. So let's talk about that right now. And one thing to note about the augments is that you, if you remove them, you don't lose them. So if I remove this augment right here, the 3.4% increased chance, it's not lost forever. You can then put on another familiar. So if you put on an augment and you're not happy with it, and you're like, oh no, did I waste it? Oh, just remove it. It's fine. You can use it on whoever you want. So with Brom, that augment had the one little gray bar. That's the best that this augment can possibly be on Brom. If we go down to a rare, let's say Melvin's, and we put it on, you can now see that it has two bars. So if we were to stable Melvin's, this would get a second stack. Now, I'll go, again, I'll go into the stacks and what they do later, but just I'm just making you aware that he will get two stacks. Now, each um, familiar of each category, so common, rare, etc., will go the the stacks will go up by one so a common had one a rare will have two but a fusion of that type so a rare fusion for instance will have three so a, a rare just a normal rare familiar that you will catch out in that you will capture will have two but a fusion just like ball land here will have three so you can see there there's the three dots same thing with the epics if we put an epic in here this will have three because he's an epic but if we do a fused epic like um wolf in here he'll have four and then if we go to a court legendary just like um, astroth he will have four there we go and if you put it into a fused legendary like Oxlaroth, Oxlaroth, he will have five so hopefully that makes sense each tier of of quality of familiar will go up by one box and if they're fused you'll have an extra box as well so that's how that's how augments are placed in and how they how they can possibly stack 
Now the way to stack them, <clears throat> pardon me, is as follows. If we go back to um, Brom we had before, we put this in, we can see that he has the one little thingy here. So that's the best that this augment's gonna get. You don't really wanna put augments on rares, uh, on commons, they're crap, right? They're, they're just bad. So if we go to a, let's say a fused, um, let's say a fused rare that you're gonna use, right? So let's say we're using on, uh, let's say Borland, right? For the moment, let's Borland is five. At the moment, my Borland is plus five. He's a fully, a fully stabled Borland. So let's release him for the moment, so I can explain this. We'll go into where he is, and here he is. We'll release him. Do you sure you want to release Borland from your stable? Again, this doesn't lose your Borland. It just puts him back into um, having more of him rather than him him being one ball and that's plus five we're now taking him out to have like six ball ends effectively you don't actually lose the familiar you just unstable him so if we put ball and all the way back to nothing we just now have six ball ends instead of one plus five ball and hopefully that makes sense as well so if we put, put, put the thing in here we can see he has three stacks and at the moment it's the on the first stack he has a 3.4 percent chance to being evaded so that's just the normal the normal chip uh, the normal skeletal lining as it is if we now stable Borland, and we go board, and we find Borland wherever he is, it's really hard to get through all these familiars to see. Uh, where is he? Here he is. If we click him here, you can see that again, boarding will give him all those extra stats and everything. But if we board one, yes, we can now take a look at Borland again out here. And we can now see that this chip has doubled in, in strength. It is now 6.8 instead of 3.4. It is now, this augment now has one slot on it. So that's really good. If we stabled ball land again, which we will right now, stable, ball land, uh, whoops, sorry, other way. Um, sorry, stable, board, and we find ball land. Here he is. We put him in again. Then we can go back and take a look at him. And we can now see that it's 10.2. It has got even stronger. And yet again, if we stable him one more time, so stable, board, find him one more time, put him in. This is the strongest this augment will get on Borland because he only has three stacks of this augment. But you can see it's up to 13.6, which is really strong. So if we were to then put this here thing, this augment on something that is plus five stabled of a legendary, for instance, which we can do, I can just showcase that. If we go down to my plus five Walken, when I can find him, here we go. He, if we take this out, for instance, and we put that, this in, you can see here it has a 3.4% chance, just as it is at one stack. Fully, fully stacked, it does 20.4%. So it's gone from 3.4 to 20.4. It's a huge improvement. This is why stabling familiars is really important. Now, especially that augments exist in the game. Augments have changed the game entirely when it comes to um, stacking different abilities. So this is how you do augments. These are why they're popular. Let's just remove that for the moment. I'll put back in whatever I had. I can't remember what it was, but I'll just quickly find it. Um, full health, I'll just put this in. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it later. That's how augments work. And that's why it's important to stable. It's important to stable anyway, because your familiars get better but putting the augments on them makes them even better and you don't necessarily need to augment and stable every single familiar you find uh, mainly the important ones you want to do to make them stronger and there's a few that i recommend which we're going to go into in just a second in the next segment that will make your life in this game a lot easier and it will help you progress a lot easier as well but that is the way augments work hopefully that was um it was easy to understand. It's a bit of a complicated process with all the stabling and, and all that sort of stuff and the different tiers and everything. It's a bit confusing, but hopefully that helped and um, made augments a little bit easier to understand. And now we'll go on with my recommendations of which familiars to get and which ones to aim for. And now we come to the end of the video. Which schematics, fusions and familiars to aim for as soon as possible? There are two familiars early game that you absolutely must have. They're mandatory and they will get you to mid game. Once you get to mid game, you'll swap them out for two other familiars. They will get you to end game. And once you're at end game, you can work on your legendary familiars or your mythics or whatever you wanna do. But you need these two early game and you need two in the mid game 
to get you all the way through to the current highest tier. Let's start with the two early game familiars, schematics, fusions. They are Shramps and Borlan. We went over them earlier in one of those segments earlier when we were looking at fusions, but now we're going to go into them in greater depth. So first we have Shramps. You can see here that he has 30% block chance and he's made up of Gramps and Shrump. So if we take a look at his stats, he has 17.5% power, 45% stamina and 12.5% speed. So he's not really hitting that hard, he's not really hitting that fast, but he is a just a, a, a giant tank basically. He's got a damage closest, um, he's got a 1 SP spread heal for the team, and he's got you know a, a 2 SP damage furthest. Who really cares about all that stuff? His main thing there is to just mitigate damage. So you can see he's made out of Grumps, uh, Gramps and Shrump, sorry. And you can see that Gramps is in Zone 2 Dungeon 2, Shrump is in Zone 1 Dungeon 2. So either of those dungeons, you will find the schematic for Shramps. You need to go and get six Gramps and six Shrumps. Why you need six is you need one Shramps, uh, one Gramps and one Shrump fused together to make Shramps. Then you need to do that five more times so you can stable him to plus five. So in total, you need six Gramps, six Shrumps to make six Shramps. You have the one Shramp, then you stable the other five, equaling one Shramp at plus five. You give him augments as we went over and then that is your early game tank until mid game and he will last you a long time and be really good for you next we look at ballland this is the healer and uh you need this guy as soon as possible as well so if we take a look at him he has 15 percent damage so at, whereas um gramps sorry shramps had 30 percent block ballland's all about damage 15% damage, you can see his, his stats there is 33.8% power, 10% stamina, 31.2% speed. So he's basically the exact opposite of, of what um, Shramps is. He's all about hitting fast and hard. And he's got his damage closest, zero thing, zero um, SP move. He's got his one SP spread heal, that's why you have Ballan. And then he has his two SP damage furthest. Again, who really cares about that? He is here for his spread heal, one SP. Now, because he has a lot of power, it means that power uh, equals heal effectively so heal scales off your power he has 33.8 percent uh, percentage into power and then he has the 15 percent damage on top of that so he's hitting quite hard which means he's healing quite a lot he's made up of merlin and bob merlin is zone 1 dungeon 3 bob is zone 1 dungeon 2 the schematic for ball and can be found in either of those dungeons now if you remember from shrimps we just went through we saw that shrimp was in zone 1 dungeon 2 Bob is also in Zone 1 Dungeon 2. So hypothetically, if you're lucky, you could get the schematic for Shramps and Borlan in Zone 1 Dungeon 2. So very early in the game, in the very first zone, you can get the schematics for the best tank and the best healer for the early game. As soon as possible, get your 6 Merlan and 6 Bob. You can get it before you even reach Zone 2 and fuse that Borlan and um, stable him to plus 5, put augments on him, and then you have your healer until mid game as well. Shramps are ball in, super important. Get them stable as soon as you can, put augments on them and you'll be laughing. So that's the early game. Now we go into the mid game and the healer is an easy choice. It's Remy T. You can see here, he's basically just like an improved ball in. He has 22.5% damage. Ball in had, uh, had 15. He has, as you can see there, he's got a lot of power. He's got 46.8% into power. He's got a damage all 1 SP move, which is nice, I guess, if you want to do an AoE attack. But it's all about that spread heal. 1 SP, spread heal, 72 to 108%. Uh, it's, it's just, and then he's got a damage target as well. It's all about that heal, though. That's why you have the healers for the heals, funnily enough. And he is made up of Rexy from Zone 4 Dungeon 1 and MET from Zone 5 Dungeon 1. So as soon as you get to zone 5 and you get to the first dungeon, uh, or even the flags leading up to the first dungeon, you can fuse Remy T. Now, he's a bit harder to fuse than a rare, uh, as Shramps and Ballam, but that makes sense because he's an epic, right? So Rexy is a dungeon boss. <clears throat> Pardon me. So he is a lot harder to capture than a than a, a rare will be, or a, or a common will be. So uh, dungeon bosses are quite difficult to catch they don't every you might do eight dungeons ten dungeons in a row without having a boss come up um but they're still not too bad 
in, in comparison to the rest of the uh, rest of the familiars in raids and stuff like that dungeon bosses as far as epics go aren't too bad so the sooner you can get remy t the better again you're going to need six rexies and six mets to be able to fuse him and stable him to plus five you can then just transfer the augments that you had from ball and over to remy t so again when you take them off we were talking about earlier when you take a augment off you don't lose it you can just change it between whatever familiar you want so get your remy t as soon as possible throw your ball and uh, augments over onto him and then you'll have a replacement um healer which is really good and he will get you all the way to tier 11 all the way to end game and should be fine but just be aware that getting those rexies will take some time so just prepare yourself for that then we come to the tanks there are three to choose from one is an obvious choice the other two are a little bit stronger but way harder to make so let's start with the obvious choice which is eularius so here he is right now 13.5 percent deflect chance uh, you can see there he's got basically 40 percent into stamina so he's quite tanky he's got his damage closest just as most of them do if not all of them do uh, he has his one sp move which is damage closest and self so you can see there his zero his free attack is damage closest for 90 to 100 percent this one sp move is damage closest so the same thing but instead of 90 to 110 it's 114.5 to 343.5 so that's a really big hit uh, and he damages himself slightly as a payout like as a as a trade-off and then he's also got drain closest so he can heal himself as well so he can keep himself up with that with that drain and then you've got remy t healing as well and keeping him alive and he's just a good familiar to have he's made up of three rares three of each rare <laughs> so that's nine rares in total so you need three negrums three valos and three lazuls hopefully i'm pronouncing that right to make one eularius nine familiars to make one um to make one fusion sounds like a lot but it's really not that bad you will get these nine um rares quicker than you'll get a rexy most likely because they're epic uh, because they're rares they come up for persuasion quite a bit you may fail to capture them but that's fine you'll get them eventually three of each to make one fusion to make a good tank is nothing so to get this guy to plus uh to plus five with augments and everything shouldn't take too long he's a really good tank he's really easy to fuse he's really easy to stable and overall that is my pick for the mid game towards the end game where you'll be able to start working on those those legendaries as we talked about but to get him you need to get to zone six dungeon three so we saw that you could get remy t as soon as you hit zone five dungeon one this you'll have to get to the last dungeon of the next zone but shramps will get you there if you have tramps fully fully stabled with augments providing your gear and everything is fine he will get you to where you can farm eularius once you get to eularius hopefully you've got a, a, a max stabled and augmented remy t by then you can get this guy and then you replace tramps with that and you'll have a plus five augmented eularius a plus five augmented remy t and that will get you through to the end game the other two choices are wins lobo here we can see he also has 13.5 percent deflect chance exactly the same stat as what eularius has he has more stamina so he's tankier uh he has heal self instead of the drain he's all around probably better but he's a lot harder to fuse so we can see there wins low that we need for him is in zone 7 dungeon 2 so it's even further towards end game it's, it's zone 7 whereas eularius was zone 6 so it, you need to get to the next zone and get to dungeon 2 to get a wins low but the real kicker is the J317 robot you see there is from Raid 4. So you need six Raid 4 epics to be able to plus five wins Lobo. That isn't really worth it to, to get an epic tank to get you to endgame. Um, Eularius is 50,000 times easier to fuse. Um, trying to get six Raid epics is going to be a long, long time and the raid ep epics don't come up for persuasion very often at all uh, i highly recommend in general that you never spent gems on persuading any familiar ever i think it's a giant waste of gems you will get them eventually if you want to that's your choice you can but i personally never spend gems on familiars ever so trying to get six rare uh, six epics from raids is a big ask so winds lobo is really good but not really a viable option to plus five at least and then the other one is Scort. 
and the reason why he is hard to get is the mini serums but you can take a look at him he's got quite a bit of uh, power he's got quite a bit of, of stamina he's got drain closest he's got shield he's really good and you need five scorpiuses which is a dungeon boss just like rexy so it's effectively it's like catching the same kind of familiar as rexy you need six of a dungeon boss which again dungeon epics are a lot easier to get than raid epics but they still don't come up for persuasion that often but you need mini serums you need 10 mini serums per fusion for scott which means that if you're going to plus five him you're going to need 60 mini serums uh i am level 347 and i have 244 mini serums so effectively plus sixing uh, plus fiving a scort making six scorts would be a quarter of the mini serums i have at level 347. mini serums you can't farm there's no way that drop them uh, more often than anywhere else you just get them by doing raids and dungeons and trials and gauntlet and all these sort of things so there you have basically there's there's the smallest amount of chance that you'll have anywhere close to having 60 mini serums by the time you get to be able to farm for scott so again he's really good but he's not worth it because it's just going to take you too long to get him so my recommendation again is to get tramps and ball and as soon as you possibly can and then as soon as you get to zone four start working on that remy t try and get him up as much as you can then when you get to raid six start working on that eularius once you have eularius plus five once you have remy t plus five they should get you all the way through to the end game and then you can start working on your legendaries whichever legendary you want to do that's up to you uh, we're not going to go into that into this video uh, but some good ones to note uh welcome is welcome is a very good healer uh, that's who I use. I have a plus five Walkham. He's very good. And then if you're a free to play player, um, Bobadom is also very good. He's, you can get him from raid one onwards. Uh, he's quite easy to fuse and quite cheap to fuse. He only needs one raid epic. As we, as we talked about before, Wins Lobo needed a raid epic. Uh, and that's just for a, for a, an epic familiar, an epic fusion. Bobadom is a legendary fusion and only needs one epic. So Bobadom is a good choice for a cheap tank, a cheap, easy tank to fuse. And Walkham is a very good choice for a healer. And so you could probably work on those two legendaries once you get to endgame or any other legendary you want. But they are my suggestions for early to mid game. And they those four familiars should get you through with no troubles. And that's it. The ultimate and comprehensive familiar guide. So I get questions relating to the things that we went through in this video on a daily basis on my YouTube channel, on my Twitch stream, and in my Discord server. Uh, about familiars and fusions and schematics and augments and all these types of things and i'm happy to help and I, I i help as much as i possibly can and reply to every single comment and and things that i see but a lot of the time i am repeating myself and going over the same information over and over again so i thought i would make this video and then that way every single possible thing i could think about familiars uh, is in one video is in one concise place and that anybody that has any issues or questions about familiars can just come here, watch this video, learn what they need to know, and ultimately it will be better for the community if uh, you know everyone has access to all this information in one place. So I really hope that it's helped. If it has, please let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate some feedback on whether this was uh, helpful for you or whether you learned something you didn't know already. And um, I also strongly su uh, suggest and urge you to join my Discord server. Um, there's 500 plus Bit Hero plays in there that are happy to help, offer friend slots, offer advice, all that good stuff. Uh, the link to my Twitch stream is in the description as well. So if you'd like to come and hang out on Twitch and when we're doing Bit Heroes, we do Bit Hero streams twice a week. Uh, my schedule is there on my, on my Twitch page. So maybe check that out as well if you're interested. But other than that, uh, yeah, I hope this video helped. As always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.